In this video lecture, we will see the complete overview of the course so that you can easily summarize the whole course. So as per our course outline, first of all see the general introduction to the space frame and then we will see the different types of space frames. And after that, we we'll deal with one practical case study in which first of all we we'll model the space frame in ETAPS as per the section database of AIC 14 code and then we we'll assign the loads to that space frame as per ASC 702 code and also we define the load combinations as per AIC 360-16 code. And after that we define the analysis option and perform the static analysis to our space frame. And also we check the behavior of our space frame and also we interpret the analysis results. After that we design our space frame as per AIC 360-16 code by the direct analysis method and in the way we complete our practical case study in which we deal with one 25 by 25 meter space frame. After that we also see the methods of erection for the construction of space frame structure and now in this video lecture we see the complete overview of the course and also in the next video lecture I will give you some bonus tips. So in the whole course first of all we will see what is space frame which is nothing but a truss like structure which is lightweight rigid structure which is constructed by interlocking the strut in a geometric pattern. After that we see the different points such as difference between the plane frame and space frame whereas in the plane frames there are only axial forces whereas in the case of space frame some of the shear forces bending moments and torsion will be there exist so that makes a difference between the plane frame to the space frame and after that we also see what and where the space frames are used such as to cover the large area the space frame is used and in the case of the workshops warehouses pavilions aircraft hangars sports arenas in such places these space frames are used and after that we see the usefulness of the space frame such as lightweight, stiffness, versatility etc and then also we'll see the advantages of the space frame system over the conventional system and also we'll see the materials used in the space frame such as the timber, steel, aluminium and different types of alloys are being used and the hollow sections are mostly preferable in the construction of the space frame such as rectangular hollow sections and the circular hollow sections. After that we see the types of space frame connections which are nothing but the end to end connection between the members of space frame. These are the connections like welded connections, bolted connections or threaded connections. And after that we also see the real life examples of the space frame systems in the different disciplines of engineering such as in civil and structural engineering, automobile engineering, mechanical engineering and aeronautical engineering and after that we see the different types of space frames in a brief according to its curvature and according to its number of grid layers. So according to its curvature it is divided in flat covers, barrel walls and the spherical domes and according to its number of grid layers it is divided as single layer, double layer and triple layer space frames. So according to the curvature the space frames are flat roofs which are generally used the barrel walls which are mostly used at the terminal stations and the spherical domes which are used for the special purpose. Whereas according to the number of grid layers the single layer grid is mostly used for the architectural purpose whereas double layer and triple layer grids are used for covering the large spans. Whereas in our course for the modeling analysis and design we use the American standards. ASC 14 this is a steel construction manual. So for the modeling of the space frame in computer software ETAPS, we consider the steel section database as per AIC 14 code which is the previous revision of the latest standard AIC 15 as well as we also use the ASC 702 code which is the older revision of the ASC 716 latest standard. So this is the standard for the minimum design loads for the buildings and other structures. So we use this standard for the consideration of the wind and earthquake force as well as we also use the ASC 360 16 code which is the specification for structural steel buildings which is the latest standard as per AISC for the design of steel structures whereas in the course we use direct analysis method for the design of the space frame. So these are the American standards we use in our whole course. Whereas for the modeling, static analysis and design of the space frame I have created one checklist that we use in the course for the smooth work in the ETAP software. So by going stepwise, we complete our whole software work in the computer software ETAPS. So now let me go through you to the how we execute the software work 
in the computer software eTabs. So first of all, in the model initialization window, we'll define the units and the codes which we will use in the model. So after defining the codes, we'll define the grid data. So as per our requirement, we define the grid in X and Y axis respectively. And also we'll define the story data. So as per the height of the space frame, we we'll define the data in the story data tab and proceed to the next step, which is nothing but the defined material data. So here we are using the American standards. So for that reason here we also need to define the material data as per American standards. So as per ASTM, here I have defined the A36 grade steel. And after that we define the section data, which is as per ASC 14 code. So as per ASC 14, we define two different section sizes that are HSS 2.5 by 0.188 and HSS 3 by 0.25 from the library which is available in the computer software eTabs from the import new section property option. And after that we proceed for modeling the space frame in the computer software eTabs. First of all we model the space frame for 1 by 1 meter and we model the space frame like a pyramid like structure. And after that we replicate the space frame in 1 meter in x direction and then that 2 by 1 meter will be replicated in the y direction. So in the way we will got the 2 by 2 meter of space frame. And after replicating the space frame for the 2 by 2 meter, we joined the top members so that whenever we replicate the whole model in the x and y axis, so the top member should replicate also. So after modeling these complete 2 by 2 space frame, we replicate the space frame in the next 23 meter in the x direction and that of 2 by 25 meter of the space frame we replicate in the y direction. So in the way we will get the whole 25 by 25 meter space frame. So after modeling the space frame as a none property, we assign the two different section sizes to our space frame which are as per AIC 14 code. So after modeling the space frame, we assign the support conditions to the model which it means restraints as a hinge support. After modeling the whole space frame, we define the load patterns. Whereas the dead load and the live load are predefined, whereas we define the superimposed dead load for the loading of the shed over the space frame and we also define the load patterns for wind and earthquake in the both direction as per ASC 702 code. And as per the parameters of the code, with respect to the hour structure location and its condition, we define that parameter and in the way wind load and earthquake load will applied. Whereas the dead load for the structure will be computed by the software automatically because we don't make a change in the property modifiers for the weight and mass parameter for the section properties. So the only we need to define the loads for the structure are nothing but the live load and superimposed dead load. So after defining the load patterns, we'll check the load cases which all are the linear static because here we are performing the static analysis and we also change the name for the dead load and live load which are predefined dead and live as per the default for the uniformity in the load combinations. And after that we assign the joint loads to the all top joints for the live load and superimposed dead load whereas for the live load we apply 1.5 kN of joint load for the maintenance purpose whereas for the superimposed dead load for the shade we define the 1.25 kN of joint load at all top joints of the space frame. And after that, we define the analysis options and we run the analysis for our space frame, which is nothing but a static analysis. So after analysis, we check the maximum and minimum deflections for the different load cases and load combinations. And after that, we also check the analysis results for the axial forces, shear forces and moments for the different load combinations and load cases. After that, to proceed for a design, we first of all revise the preferences in the steel section design as per our structure condition as per ASC 360 16 code. And after that, we start the design check and in the way we design our structure. After designing the space frame, we check the space frame for stress capacity ratio by verify all members are passed. And here we got the message as all steel frames pass the stress capacity check which it means that all steel sections are safe under the applied loading. So in the way we complete the design of the space frame and also I review the, the different parameters and the things related to the design. So here we complete one practical case study for the space frame of 25 by 25 meter. And after that we also see the construction methods which are used for the erection of the space frame structure such as scaffold method block assembly method and the lift up method. So this is it. This was the whole course of the space frame and this is the complete overview of the course.
In the next Twitter lecture, I will give you some bonus tips which helps you to collect some good resources related to the space frame and enhance your skills in analysis and design of the space frame structures.